Okay, case five. All right, so I think this one's me. Um, so right off the bat, we see this really dense collection of cells in the dermis. Okay. Um, and even from this scan, we can kind of see that the epidermis above this collection of, of cells is a little more um, acanthotic than than the periphery. Good. Um, yeah, I'm not seeing great tabling there like we sometimes see with this. Good. So you know the you know the diagnosis. Good. <laughs> there, there's a little tabling. See right here. It's not quite like I agree. Like sometimes it really like the ridge comes down and then it's flattened out. But see how the ridges kind of fuse together and flatten a bit here. So that's a little bit of tabling. But you don't always see tabling, and you don't always see epidermal hyperplasia in this diagnosis. So what? So what is the diagnosis then? So I'm thinking dermatofibroma. Yeah, good. And dermato, this is a dermatofibroma, and dermatofibroma usually is like a 2x magnification diagnosis. In fact, you often can pick the slide up and look at it with your naked eye and see this kind of hazy, slightly purplish-looking, ill-defined lesion in the dermis and a little thickening of the epidermis over it, and you can know, oh, that's going to be a dermatofibroma. So with practice, you can actually often do that. And I think that it's good to get used to making the diagnosis from low power because when you go to high power, you will start seeing things that will bother you, like mitoses and atypia and stuff that's totally fine in a dermatofibroma, but it causes anxiety for the pathologist who's not familiar with seeing those things. So you look for the epidermal hyperplasia with some blunting or tabling, flattening of the tips of the reedy. You see that you've got a dermal nodule. Sometimes it trickles into the subcutis a little bit. That is totally fine. Do not worry that that happens. And occasionally DFs can be completely in a subcutis. That freaks people out. And it's not very common, but it happens occasionally. But sending little, little, little uh, trickly um, uh, edges down into the subcutis is totally normal, common finding in dermatofibroma. Do not be afraid of dermatofibrosarcoma protuberans, which we'll talk about later. Don't be afraid of it just because you see a little, a little fat getting trapped at the bottom. Um, and then at the periphery, it's not usually well circumscribed. Like, I mean, this one kind of looks circumscribed, but look, see here on this left side, how it kind of splays out into the dermis. And as it does so, it entraps dermal collagen bundles. That's very characteristic. So that low power thing, a spindle cell nodule in the dermis with entrapment of collagen at the edges and overlying epidermal hyperplasia, right away, dermatofibroma should be the top choice on your list, okay? And then as you look into the, the middle of it, the cells can have a variety of, of patterns. Sometimes they're kind of haphazard or even almost a swirled story form pattern, even though story form pattern is the buzzword for DFSP. Many times dermatofibromas um, can have, uh, can have uh, story form type patterns, no, no problem. And then uh, let's see, what else, uh, what's going on up here? What's all this stuff? Um, so there's a ton of giant cells in here. Yeah, there are a bunch of, there's a big junk on the slide, sorry. All right, there, yes, there are a lot of giant cells. What kind of giant cells, uh, you had to give a type, what kind of giant cells are those? Um, I'd probably say Teuton. Yeah, they're Teuton giant cells. And even though Teuton is the buzzword for juvenile xanthogranuloma, JXG, you often find them in dermatofibromas. And in fact, they're a very helpful sign if you're thinking, Oh, this thing looks like a uh, dermatofibroma. Finding giant cells in it, particularly Teuton giant cells with that little, the pink smooth uh, uh, cytoplasm in the middle, then the wreath or ring of nuclei, and then a foamy periphery, that's really helpful. Uh, any type of giant cell, they often have kind of foam and they often have pigment in them. What kind of pigment is this? This should be hemosiderin. Yeah, it's hemosiderin. And, and here, I love it on this scan. You can really see that it's not just brown, but it's a golden kind of orangey brown color as opposed to melanin, which is more of a brown brown color, I guess. Um, golden brown and kind of three-dimensional and refractile and chunky, fragmented looking. I don't know. Those are all the kind of words that, that resonate with me. And I think right here, if there's ever a golden brown chunky refractile fragmented looking hemosiderin this is perfect example of it right here actually that's really nice um uh sometimes usually you can look and tell hemosiderin from melanin but i i still occasionally think oh this is going to be hemosiderin and then i stain it and it's melanin so occasionally even i i am wrong so um sometimes it's real obvious but other times uh the pigment is not not always you're not always able to tell it apart like in dermpath you usually you can but not always but you're right in dermatofibromas they often have 
They often have some degree of hemorrhage into them, so finding little collections of blood or extravasated red cells and hemosiderin and foam, foam cells, xanthoma cells, foamy giant cells, Teuton giant cells, all of those things are all great points to, to favor dermatofibroma, okay? They, you don't have to have them, but you often have some collection of those things. And I feel like dermatofibromas that begin to get bleeding into themselves and hemosiderin often have a more abundant foam and more abundant giant cells like this. So some people call these hemosiderotic dermatofibroma. If you get a lot of blood filled spaces, you could call them aneurysmal dermatofibromas. <clears throat> they can kind of have overlap there. You could also just call this dermatofibroma. That'd be fine too. And then the last thing before we've talked about all the patterns and everything, but I haven't talked about the cells yet because the cytology of this lesion, that should be the last thing that you focus on. Because if you go right to that to high power, you're going to freak out because you're going to find, oh, look, there's like a little ring mitosis. And that, by the way, I am not convinced that ring mitoses are always atypical. Some people like regard them as atypical, but I see them in benign and even reactive things sometimes and even normal tissue occasionally. So, um, so I'm not, a ring mitosis by itself does not make me think, oh, it's atypical, it's malignant. I, others may disagree with me, but that's my view. The cells of dermatofibroma are kind of variably, they are often kind of plump, juicy kind of uh, spindle cells uh, with a, a, some cytoplasm. Sometimes they can look almost round, like here, depending on how they're cut. Occasionally they're thin and stretched out, and those kind of cases can sometimes mimic DFSP. But when they're plump like this, it's really helpful because these are not the cells of DFSP. DFSP has very thin, elongated, monotonous spindle cells without atypia. And dermatofibromas usually have kind of bigger, more plump cells and sometimes have some scattered pleomorphism. It, it, people, when it's really pronounced, they'll call those monster cells. I don't have any to, to show you right here, but it's normal to have scattered mitoses, scattered pleomorphic nuclei, and a dermatofibroma is totally fine and acceptable. And you can have a variable amount of mixed in inflammation, lymphocytes, sometimes Langerhans cells kind of hanging out, especially when you've got blood filled or hemosiderin rich dermatofibromas, you can find a lot of Langerhans cells hanging out in them from time to time. So um, that's the, the kind of cells, the big plump cells of a dermatofibroma. But again, the diagnosis you get to by looking at all of the other features, okay? Good. And for, for board purposes, people like to talk about factor 13A <clears throat> as being a helpful marker for these. I feel like you don't usually need it, but sure, if you want to do something, there will be a lot of positive factor 13A positive dendritic cells tend to be abundant, but not all the cells of a dermatofibroma will stain. You'll just have many because there's kind of a mixture of cells in a dermatofibroma, all right? And then there's the collagen trapping at the edges. The, collagen, the reticular dermal collagen bundles get kind of wrapped around by uh, the dermatofibroma cells. Uh, and that can be, uh, can be kind of a helpful clue. And then down at the bottom, let's look at the fat real quick and then we'll move on. The trickling into the fat. Uh, one thing that's a little different, when DFSP invades fat, it's very clean. It gets into the fat and just kind of traps it and surrounds it totally by tumor cells. But when dermatofibromas trickle into fat, they usually have some kind of foamy histiocytes and lymphocytes and a little fat necrosis kind of mingled in. See how these fat cells are kind of dying and turning into little lipid droplets. And there's some kind of like light foamy cytoplasm here and there's scattered lymphocytes. It's a little bit more busy. That's the kind of, the, when, when the fat is involved by a dermatofibroma, you get these kind of reactive changes in fat necrosis. And in DFSP, you usually don't. It's much more crisp and clean. I'll show you an example later. All right, any questions? Can yes. You refer to this up top superficially as a uh, like very small Gren zone. Oh, the Gren zone. I forgot. People like the Gren zone. Sure, if you want to. That that's like a Gren zone right here. I I find the Gren zone to be like a not terribly helpful concept. Gren zone for anyone wondering is uh that is that when there's a dermal lesion that there's a space a kind of normal dermis between the dermal lesion and the overlying epidermis that there's like a little layer my understanding is that grens is the german word for zone so a gren zone is a zone zone so i think just the grens is i guess how it was initially said and then we've we've translated it and made it redundant in english i guess someone who's who is watching online and knows german can correct me um i've had people before when they're like yeah actually that word means this and it's really helpful because it's how i learned so i find that even though we teach that these have grens um, uh, dermatofibromas, uh, oftentimes I see without a Grenz, particularly when they're picked at and irritated, 
they start pushing up into the epidermis and the epidermis over the top can get very thin and atrophic. It's like the, like the DF wants to kind of pop out of the skin and it pushes up and thins out the epidermis and the grens totally disappears. And you often, I often see biopsies of DFs that have been, you know, excoriated and picked at and traumatized. So don't rely on the grens. I think the grens is, the one thing it really is helpful for is granuloma facial. It almost always has a beautiful grens, but I feel like for other lesions, take it or leave it. I just don't find it that helpful. If you find it a helpful concept, cool, go for it. But for me, I just don't think it works that terribly well. But great question. Any, any other questions? And there's a ton of different varieties of DF, and I have multiple videos about dermatofibroma, and I'll link to those down below. Well, let me close some of these windows here.